Hey there, welcome to the Seinfeld Show. I'm Chris. Got Laura Kessel and Craig is back. Yeah. How are you doing, Craig? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. I'm glad to be back. Good. What a hey, week to come back. Yeah, what a week to come back. I, I yeah. feel bad, Laura. I'm sorry. I mean, I kind of gloss over your name. My ass, Laura. Oh, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Craig. No, no, it's good. It's good. Um, yeah, kind of one of the banner episodes of Seinfeld this week, the contest. 51st episode of Seinfeld, which is surprising, Craig. Uh, yeah. The Sock of the Lore last week, we, we hit the 50 episode <laughs> milestones. We've been doing this for 50 weeks now, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess, yeah. 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 yeah, that's amazing when you say it's it like, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yikes. And I was excited when I said that. I was like, oh, 50 episodes. This is great. All right. So um, the contest. Probably, boy. What do you guys think? Top five? Yeah, at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I'm not even sure if I would say top five, but I, I got to say top ten at the very worst. Okay. I'm, I'm still in the Murph Griffith show. I mean, that, that kind of... <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, that yeah, that didn't make anybody else's top five, but I got stuff like that in the um, oh, the marine biologist. I mean, to me, that's up there. That's one of mine. One of yeah, my but but the contest is up there. I don't think I, it. It was funny. I, I think we did a past iteration of Seinfeld. Um, a pastor friend of mine used to be on this podcast. It was funny. The first episode we listened to, because we used to go by this chart of the best Seinfeld episodes of all time, and the guy who ranked them ranked the contest first. So we did the contest. And it was funny. This is a pastor that he, he understands how life works, but he had a very hard time talking about the contest. So I, I almost invited him to come back with us just to hear his, you know, being awkward. But I, I'm not sure if he would have done that. So, um, yeah. So just – classic episode um it was interesting because remember this episode got aired in 1992 mm -hmm. and I, I, we could say it right we could say the m word <laughs> yeah so jerry george elaine and kramer uh, well that's the problem with doing it with the pastor because you have to say is this okay to talk about it or not but yeah. hey let's say it whatever um you know the the, the big four had a contest to say who could go the longest time without pleasuring himself, masturbation, and all other stuff? And I thought it was kind of crazy because now, hey, it's probably an episode would go up on TV Land if it came out in 2022. But man, 92, 30 years ago, we just <laughs> didn't talk about masturbation in primetime TV. Right. How, how shocking was it? I didn't watch this episode live, but man, there had to be a lot of flack when they first aired it, right? I don't remember. I mean, I was watching at that point, but I don't remember it being a deal. I mean, I'll be honest with you that you know, they don't say the they don't say the word, so maybe right. maybe that's why. But I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't remember a lot of their episodes other than the last one getting a lot of heat. You know, I don't. I seem to remember. You guys are a lot younger than me, though. <laughs> yeah, like, I never really heard, like, and even in the conservative circles I ran into, I don't think I ever remember a, oh, my gosh, you shouldn't watch Seinfeld because they did this episode or that episode. Wonder why <laughs> Seinfeld got passed, maybe. Because, like, I'll give you a prime example. When Ellen came out, my goodness, the... Uh, Mm -hmm. Sky opened and uh, holy cow, you know, we thought the end of the world was coming. Well, but, it's a different thing, I think. You know? Right. Yeah, it's true. But, you know, Seinfeld had the classic gay episode. Like, not that there's anything wrong with that. And maybe well, they I, never no, mentioned. I was just thinking about that. I don't know. I don't remember when mm -hmm. that comes. Um, I thought maybe, what, season six or seven? It was later on in the mm -hmm. series, right? I don't think I don't it was know. that late. Okay. Um, huh, it's this year. <laughs> it's this season. Oh, uh, oh, really? Season four? Season four, oh. episode seventeen. So it's not okay. far. It's not far down. Um, I mean, it's. I think. Um, I think in that time, you know. 
I don't think, I just don't think masturbation would have been a huge thing, you know? Okay. Um, well, and they didn't say it either. I mean, they, they right. certainly were yeah. careful. They were certainly careful, uh, you know, being on network TV in 1992, I think they were probably extra careful to not specifically say that word, right. even though it's always implied throughout the whole process but you know they never really say the word and i think that give, gives them a little bit of a leg up on not having to worry about the network being upset or you know getting a different rating or anything like that so you know they they did it in a in a tasteful way if you will mm-hmm. well i mean according to big freights master my domain i mean that was yeah, like yeah uh, that was pop culture i mean everyone's yeah. saying that yeah um you know when you think about it, this episode has other things that probably could have been uh, targeted by, you know, by critics, you know, the whole idea of them, of Jerry, we'll say, just waiting for Marla to give it up, you know, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, to be crass, you know, yeah. um, you know, them oogling their neighbor, you know, yeah. today, that would have been <laughs> today, oh, that yes. would be them in jail. <laughs> Yeah. Um I I just I don't know. It doesn't I don't think it I don't think it bothers me. I mean, the only episode in this series that ever bothered me was when they killed off Susan. I mean, I didn't like Yeah. Susan, that that was weird. <laughs> I didn't like her, but I was like, geez, can you come up with a worse way of you know right. lopping off a character? Right. Um so well, well, like or not, TV has changed. And I think we're smart <laughs> enough to realize it's 30 years since the show came out, but mm-hmm. that episode now would have been, like I said, I mean, maybe you couldn't air it on Nick, but you know, there's, I mean, there's really not that many, you know, networks would be like, oh, we can't talk about that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, right. yeah, so, so yeah, I, I think we've lost, I, I, I don't think anybody really has the outreach anymore. It's just thinking back to where TV was in 92. We're like, wow, that's surprising they went there in 92, you know? Mm-hmm. So very good. Um, I I got to say, though, and again, we keep forgetting, this is a comedy. You <laughs> go outlandish to be funny and everything. But, man, how comfortable do you have to be for friends to have a contest like that? Well, Larry, Larry, David, Larry David had a contest with his friends. That's the inspiration right. for this episode. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's sort of a strange, you know, especially with Elaine being in the mix too. Like, right, they, you know, they they always kind of treat each other like they're they're all on the same level of the group. There's no like, you know, you know, Elaine's a woman; she can't be one of the guys, or vice versa. So, you know, I think it. it makes some sense that you know they they tend to talk about a lot of that stuff and of course jerry and elaine dated and george was was infatuated with elaine and then kramer is you know kramer so he does weird things and says weird things all the time so it's not a surprise that uh that he would be involved in something like this yeah i've known craig for a long time i've known laura for a long time and you know sometimes podcasts will have you know maybe that attract attention we have some type of a contest (laughs) If we ever came even close to that, let's stop the podcast. Let's lose each other's phone numbers. <laughs> yeah. Because I, yeah, I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> and I, I don't want to lose your numbers. I want to be, remain close and everything. But man, I, I just, and again, that's part of comedy. How far can you take it? Because it's, that makes it funny. If, if you didn't do, go there, it wouldn't be funny. But yeah, I don't want to have any contest remotely close to that. That would be <laughs> feel so awkward. That'd be rough. Yeah. So, um, I, I, oh. even, even the, I mean, even the start of this episode, mm-hmm. how many people would have that conversation with their friends, you know, that their mother, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> first of all, you know, I, I have to say, actually, you know, it's funny. One thing that when I was watching this episode over the past week or so, um, I could, I didn't remember that it just started so early in the episode. Usually oh, there's no. like a little work to get there. But I mean, it was like some stupid Jump conversation in. that I don't even remember. And Jump right in, yeah. yeah, and then boom, they're already in the conversation, you know. Right. Um, and then one of the things that makes me laugh in this episode so much is the 
the idea of all of the temptations that they have. Mm -hmm. And and I have to admit, I'm still mourning JFK Jr. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um everybody, every girl, and the, if they say they don't, they're lying. Every girl in America who's probably my age and maybe a little older, JFK Jr. was like the guy, you know. And to see Elaine just going nuts, you know, okay. the way she jumps up on the counter and she's like, Are you hurting? Are you trying to hurt me? You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just having him pay attention to her is just like, she's like the prototypical girl, you know, in that moment, you know. It, well, Laura, I hate to, I, I absolutely hate to ask you this, but mm -hmm. I, I've got to. And if people have listened to the show for a amount of time, you know, they'll be disappointed if I don't. Bucky Dent he's, or he's JFK than, Jr.? He's better than Bucky Dent. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, yeah. I've heard you talk about Bucky Dent before. That's a high yeah. bar. I mean, my yeah. goodness. Man, wow. you were you at the paper? Were you working there when I was when he died in Willoughby? Uh, JFK? Yeah. Huh. When did he, he die? I, I don't know. 99 or 90, 99. Okay. okay. Um I still remember when I woke up that morning and turned on the TV. And I mean, there's very few people that I have gone. <gasps> You know, when you gasp and it, I still remember that it was just so unbelievably shocking, you know? One of the things I liked about the paper that we worked at, Laura, was mm -hmm. we were very, uh, what do you call it? We were very open to putting big news on the front page. Yeah. You know what happened. Now, some papers you don't. But like I remember, like George Harrison died. You know, and we're like, okay, he goes on the front. And it was definitely a good call. I, I wonder. I don't remember that because I did a lot of wire pages when mm -hmm. I was there, and so I mean, I some of those big stories I vividly remember. Even the stories that were like nine eleven, mm -hmm. I think. I remember the, when he died. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever remember that conversation, and I'm sure oh, okay. maybe I was off that night or off that week or whatever. Yeah, it was a Saturday he died. Well, it's like Friday into Saturday he died. Yeah. I mean, it was just, I mean, the worst thing was like, you know, his his plane like disappeared basically, you know, yeah. for a while. You know, that that was the thing is where did it go, you know? Um, and then they figured it out where it was and then they had to go find them, you know? And, you know, the big thing was they were talking about how they were still all like, buckled in their seats, you know, and it was just like an instant death thing. And I remember they, the thing that bothered me about his death still to this day is like, there was no, he was buried at sea. He wow. was, they were, they brought him back the bodies and they cremated him. And then they took him out on that ocean where he died and they just scattered the ashes out there. I well, mean, yeah. It was troublesome for me because, like, the whole thing about his father was everybody still goes to his grave, you know? Yeah. And why couldn't he have been buried where his mom was, you know? Yeah. So, but it's not my business. <laughs> right. Well, and the other thing was hard, too. And obviously, JFK Jr. was, people knew who he was. But, mm -hmm. man, I think about his wife. And what, did his wife's sister die in that wreck, yes. too? Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, and, and granted, we I think it was Carolyn Pissette, for some yep. reason that name six my yep. my brain. And Lauren was the sister's name. Yeah, and, and, and obviously devastating. I mean, JFK Jr., the Kennedy family has had all kinds of unspeakable tragedies. But, man, sometimes the families that we don't know, think about it. You know, they lost, one, they lost the in-law with JFK Jr., but, you know, two sisters died. I mean, that yeah. had been horrible on the family, too. Mm -hmm. uh, it was tough. Like, I... I'm, I'm thinking I've got a Lakers game for some reason in the background, and I'm thinking about the death of Kobe Bryant. And we're like, oh, Kobe Bryant dying is awful, but man, it was like six other people too that died. Yeah, I, you know, those things impact so many families. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah, JFK Jr. A, a big part of the episode. Now that we're all depressed, I'll think about the horrible death of JFK Elaine, Jr. What was it, Elaine Bennis Kennedy Jr.? Oh yes, <laughs> yes. She's so funny. And where she, and 
she I'm watching it in in the background <laughs> and she's in she just came in after her class and she just told him you know where she lived <laughs> and she's like I think I said such and such but I don't know <laughs> yeah uh, that was her name. He asked her name, and she said, "I think I said Elaine. I don't know." <laughs> and I mean, that's so relatable, you know, because everybody would be the same way. So yeah, be a, like a Bucky Dent, you know, and, mm -hmm. and will be or whatever. So yeah, I, I don't know. Um, on the contest, what do you guys think about you know the men putting up a hundred bucks? <laughs> But Lane had to put up 150 because it's easier for a woman to go without doing that than men. I don't know. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I think it, clearly, I think Kramer obviously should have put up the thousand that Jerry wanted. Because <laughs> Jerry, I mean, Jerry telegraphed it. You'll be you'll be out before we get the check. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, he's right. And <laughs> Kramer yeah. is like a little bit of a nut, you know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, there's so much there in that minute of that, like couple seconds of conversation, you know, George showing his true cheap money grubbing self, you know, he's like, you got to do a thousand, you know, yeah. <laughs> because he, he's, he wants to win, you know, yeah. a thousand from Elaine, you know. Yeah. Um, and I have to say the thing about Kramer surprises me the most <laughs> Is I was shocked. I'm shocked that Kramer had a thousand dollars in cash in his apartment. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, like he came in and just bangs it. I mean, how did Kramer get a thousand? Get a hundred dollars? You know? Yeah. Well, he's Kramer. He's always yeah. He always has money when he needs money or whatever. You know? Yeah. But I mean, like, he just had it. You know? Yeah. I don't have a. I don't have a hundred dollars on me. Right. Ever. Well, I think we talked about it in the past. You never know. You know, Kramer may have a hundred thousand dollars stashed away somewhere. Yeah, you know? he, he might in this like pillow or something. Right, right. It wouldn't be in a bank, you know, collecting yeah. you know interest. It'd be more like you know, mm -hmm. in a pillow or a sock or something. Um, yeah, and you're right. Um, kind of weird. 2022, not cool to um, stare at naked women in neighboring apartments. But that's where Kramer <laughs> fails. Um, they live in like the best possible. <laughs> Did you know? Did you think about? I was thinking about it that they have the best place. They live in the best place to live in America because not only do they have the naked lady, they also have Becky Gulkey lives across the street too, right? Oh yeah, from, yeah. That, from yeah. that other episode. Yeah, where she where he hit the car or she hit the car, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, holy crap! I mean, that's yeah. a hell of an apartment building. And I wonder if you watch a lot of sitcoms, which we all have, do we get a wrong idea of what's happened in New York? Because think about friends, you know, the naked guy, you know. I, I mean, I, I wonder if anybody's ever been scared off or attracted to New York. It's like, whoa, naked people all over the place, you know? Yeah, but he was an ugly naked guy in front. Oh, like, yeah, that's true. Remember, don't that's forget. True. Yeah. But, but if you just like the thought of saying, hey, I can see naked people, you know, maybe not attracted <laughs> to them, but. Yeah. New York's either the place to go or you're scared off. You know, maybe <laughs> New York should sue these shows for saying you know, you're scaring everybody off from coming here or something. I don't know. Um, I I thought this was interesting. Um, you know, George, he visits his mom in the hospital, you know, going back to the original story of the show. And there's an attractive woman giving another per, uh, woman a sponge bath <laughs> behind the curtain. Again, comedy show. We're playing this up. That wouldn't happen at a regular hospital, would it? Probably not. Yeah, they probably take them to a bathroom and do it. Yeah, yeah, not in front of other people. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, now, sponge baths do happen. There's obviously. something very, to me, there's something very interesting about that scene. And it's probably because I'm a woman. Um, first of all, this was um, Estelle Getty's. It's not, that's not even the right name. Estelle was Harris. Her, Estelle Harris. Thank you. Um, it was her first episode. Right? Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't either. Oh, okay. Wow. And um, what a position they had her laying in that bed. Yes. yes. I mean, she's <laughs> yeah. a man. I mean, what a welcome to the show. She's like basically like they almost spread eagle on that on that bed, you know? Yeah. And, I, and she's like totally not in traction, 
you know, he said she's in traction. But yes, I mean, it would have been funnier, I think, if she was. But I, I cannot tell you how many times I've watched this episode since whenever it's what did you say? 30 years. And yeah. every time it comes on, I want that blanket to go up on top of her. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, holy crap. That's terrible. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Uh, pretty rough. Yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah. And then, you know, like you said, Elaine, you know, her fitness club patronized by John Kennedy Jr. <laughs> and then, you know, Jerry, yeah, Jerry's a little thirsty in this episode. Uh, he, he's pretty mad because, you know, Marlon would just want to have sex with him. So Jerry's like, you know, get angrier. Um, I thought, kind of goofy, but I thought it was fun when Jerry had to watch children's cartoons. He was like chanting them over and over to distract yeah. himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing is, she would have slept with him, Marla. Yeah. If he wouldn't open his mouth and talked about the contest. Yes. <laughs> she was going to sleep with him. So would, would that have like disqualified him from the contest? Because if you're you're you know you're not self gratifying, but you're getting the gratification that you're looking for. I mean, would he have been out, or would he have been allowed to continue on? And it, you know that doesn't count against him, I guess. I don't think so. I don't think it. I think it count. I don't think it would count because I think it's self gratifying. Right. Yeah. So maybe Jerry and Elaine should have went in on it together, and uh, they could have just been buddies again. And uh, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah, you know, and they would have won the contest, or they could have been like, okay, well, we'll split the money fifty fifty. Yeah. Um, yeah, this white Jerry for said told her. I mean, it just doesn't make sense at all. I mean, like, w- w- what was Marley going to do? Oh, okay, I'll go along with it. You know, <laughs> I mean, well, I think he he probably, he probably thought it wasn't a big deal, but then. Yeah. You probably realize as you're saying this to the virgin, she right. probably thinks it's a huge deal, which she does. And maybe another person might not have thought it was a big deal. You know, like someone that was a sexual partner of Jerry's might not have thought it was a big deal. Yeah, yeah but, but especially with Marla, it's her first time. You know, she you know she wants to be. Um... Yeah, you know, you want to be special, not to uh, help him out with a contest. That that shouldn't be your story. You know, what I mean, hey, the first time it happened, I helped this guy out that was dating win a contest. You know, <laughs> I don't know, very strange. So, uh, what else you guys got? I'm one of the things um, that I wrote down about um, this show is I thought the the way that they showed that people were out of the contest was brilliant, you know, with the little, like showing them in bed, you know, frustration, tossing and turning. And then all of a sudden at the end, they're all sleeping, you know, yeah, including the cheater, you know, George, the cheater. Yes. (laughs) I I think it was fun. I think it was fun how they, they, you know, this episode had a little, a little depth to it where, you know, Jerry and George are, are bickering at each other in the apartment over yes. the littlest of things because they're, they're just yeah. so, you know, just wound tight. And every, you know, like you, like you said, Laura, you know, everybody else, you know, Kramer is getting a good night's sleep. He's excited. He comes into the apartment and he's all happy go lucky. <laughs> and I think it's just funny how, you know, how they show that process too to kind of like make it like because at first you might say well who cares it's only going to be for how many days but you know you start to see the the cracks in the foundation of these people yeah. as they go through this journey so it, it's very i think that's part of the um the allure of this episode is that they're going through this but then it's actually impacting them it's not just some mm-hmm. throwaway kind of plot line that's actually working. Mm-hmm. Um, I <laughs> one of my favorite moments also. I like this episode. There's a lot here. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot more than like. I mean, when you watch it like a few times, you see stuff, and then you watch it like as many times as unfortunately I've watched it in the past week. <laughs> you get like all kinds, like. I I love the way 
Jerry gives George a hard time about the fact that he was reading Glamour magazine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, I, that was read, good. I read Glamour magazine as an adult. Oh, okay. Like in the like in my like late twenties into my thirties, because there were three things at the back of the magazine that I really liked. The rest of it was like basically like teenage kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> or like early, early 20s, college okay. age, maybe like they had a thing where um, it was like, I forget the name of it. Darn it. I should have figured it out. Um, it was like uh, they would pick like a dressing, like a clothes topic, like, you know, ripped jeans and they would have like 20 pictures on the page and they would show like who did it right who did it wrong you know <laughs> and then there was one with like um excuse me it was like a com like a comic like it was drawings like they would have like a topic you know like um and it would be like phrases and stuff and it was i liked it because because of that kind of stuff um, but to me, it's just so funny that he, he's like, glamour, <laughs> glamour yeah. you know, yeah. yes. <laughs> I love yeah. it. You know, it's just so funny. Well, um, cause it also plays against like when Jerry was, you know, in his little stand up, the, the transitional stand up routine where he's talking about, you know, the adult magazines that you could procure. And I think mm -hmm. that's probably why he was so enamored or disgusted by glamour, I guess, in this case, you know, so I think, I think it kind of made sense more when they did the sort of the transitional, you know, I think this was at the end, I think when they were talking about, you know, wearing hats and stuff and, and whatnot, but he was sort of referencing playboy and stuff like that. And wondering, you know, why would George opt for, for glamour over a magazine that more, more people might be interested in. And the fact that it was at his mom's house. So his mom clearly <laughs> in her like sixties is reading glamour magazine too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just so weird. Um, the, uh, what do I have written down? Um, I was going to say something else. Oh, there's a lot of really good line one liners in this, uh, this show, like, especially like when they were talking to each other about if they were still basically still in the contest, you know, the I'm the Lord of the Manor and yeah. uh, King of the County, uh, yeah. Queen of the Castle, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was all like royalty type stuff. Yeah. You know? I, I thought this was interesting. I, I'm looking at the notes I have here on Wikipedia. You know, TV Guide said this was the top episode of all time. I'm assuming they had talked about sitcoms. But they say episode, so I mean, this could be like dramas and everything else. Um, that kind of surprises me, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I could think of one that would vote better. I mean, I don't remember every TV show off the top of my head, but I don't know. Does that make sense to say that this is the top of episode of all time? And say. we're talking episode, not just Seinfeld. Yeah. I mean, period. I would say it's right out. I would say it's up there. You know, like I can't like when I think about a bunch of um, sitcoms, like I can't think of like an individual episode of there's only like a couple of episodes of Friends that I liked, like really liked. Um, like, I don't know if you do. Were you guys Friends fans? No, or? no, I was not. I never really okay. got into Friends either. Yeah. Um, like there was one episode where <laughs> they they basically Monica is like incredibly competitive, like to the point of being like annoyingly competitive and they bet the apartment. Uh, uh, Monica's apartment is like 20 times better than um, Joey and Chandler's. And so they bet it and base it on a trivia contest. And it's like, it's like Jeopardy almost, you know, just like lightning fast questions. And they're all like totally embarrassing questions about each character. And they're hilarious. Um, like Monica's nickname on the 
one sport team sports team was big fat goalie you know <laughs> that kind yeah. of stuff <laughs> and uh yeah. what's the name of the uh t- what what name is on the tv guide when it's delivered you know mm-hmm. and it comes to chandler and it's chanandler bong miss <laughs> miss chanandler bong i think but it's like like I can't think of a single like a single episode of like Cheers or you know different different shows that I would that you could but I think on Seinfeld you can like I can pick out oh, single yeah. episodes of like I Love Lucy or mm-hmm. Mash you know I have a favorite Mash episode and I have a favorite I Love Lucy episode but there's not a lot of those in different a lot of different you know sitcoms that I've watched you know mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think this is. I mean, it's a great episode, and it's it's probably it's not my favorite Seinfeld episode, but it's a great episode, and it's certainly one that you'd want to watch if you have like a collection of singular TV episodes that you can you can only watch for the rest of your time, or if you're on a deserted island and you can only pick a handful of episodes. Yeah, this is probably an episode that I would pick, but it's not my favorite Seinfeld episode, but it's. It's definitely a top five episode and Mm -hmm. I don't, maybe they meant, meant it as, you know, the best Seinfeld episode. Maybe they meant it of all time. I think that's hard because, you know, it's a different genre than other, you know, other shows. And, you know, I think it's, you know, there's, there's other shows that I would probably prefer certain episodes and, you know, nothing against this. It's just, you know, if you're in the mood for drama, if you're in the mood for animation or whatever, you might, be more inclined to you know pick out other other shows but this is a great episode and this is a an all-timer as far as tv goes but maybe not for me but i'm sure for a lot of people they would definitely pick this as an all-timer for them all right any any of the thoughts with Seinfeld? i got a couple other streaming shows i want to talk about real quick before we close for tonight I, I was just surprised that this was Estelle Harris's first introduction into Seinfeld. Yeah. I mean, because you know we've seen um, we've seen his dad, but we have never. I didn't realize that we had not seen George's mom until this point. So it was kind of a it was it was kind of jarring in a, in a little a little ways because you know you remember her so well from watching all these other episodes, but then you kind of fail to realize that this is the the introduction of her, and she's bedridden for the most part, but. They put her in, they drop her into this great episode, though, and it helps her so much because even though she's bedridden, she's got all these fun lines where she's hungry and she wants a sandwich. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's, of course, talking about the fact that she caught George in the act. And, you know, it, it's a it's a really, like, you would think any other show or episode, it would be the worst possible way to, to put someone in there where they're going to be laying in a hospital mm-hmm. bed for the majority of their time on screen but it works so well because of the incident that started all of it. <laughs> and also too, I maybe if I'm not mistaken, is the, is the cousin that comes to visit her, is that the cousin that George, like they, they want to set George up with or something or, <laughs> or, um, or George wanted to have uh, a relationship with, and then she was <laughs> actually all for it or whatever. I cannot remember for the life of me if it was, but do you remember that? Yeah. Where, I George, remember, but I don't remember. George was sure. talking about how he, I, I think he was trying to like say that he was doing it just to like, you know, throw somebody off or something. And then she actually wanted to be in a relationship with George, her cousin. So I don't know yeah. if it was one or not. Yeah, I, I know she's talking about my mantra was the same one. That was that was a good episode. Yeah. Um, there were so many good lines in the episode. Like <clears throat> he got confused about dates. So he, he said the actor played Jesus made questionable choices or something. And like they were talking about something different. That yeah, was great. It is not the same girl. <laughs> okay. It's, it's not the actor. same, not the same character or not the same actor in character. Um it's not the same character either. Okay. okay. The, the character the character is Risha. Risa. Risa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like, I always rem- I kept remembering like that nasally. Like mm-hmm. almost like the female George voice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I, almost, I when I was listening to her, I was like, that sounds exactly like the one cousin that George almost got into a relationship with. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, if we ever got together, really say, okay, we're a top 10, 15 
that one was on my top 10, 15, because it was so awkward. I love that one. I, and I, I'm sure you guys don't, don't feel the same way, but the caddy also. <laughs> I, I love that one. Oh, yeah. Where, where the caddy one. was like trying to tell, tell like Kramer what to do and stuff. Oh, yeah. That was brilliant. All right. Um, any other thoughts on Seinfeld? One take a few minutes. I got a gush about show. There's a new show that I'm yeah. I, I'm starting to really really like. All right. well, what what is it? Yeah, what is it? Um, Quan Leap. I've been okay. watching the new Quan Leap, and the more I'm watching it, I like it. Um, okay. I've been. I think I've talked to you guys individually about this. Maybe. I have not heard your. Uh, yeah, your, you said it. You said it to uh, me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think Laura said she. You didn't watch the old one, the Scott mm-hmm. Bakula. No. Did Did you watch the old one, Craig? Yeah, I watched an episode here and there, but I didn't watch it very religiously. Yeah, I, I probably may have seen half of them. I, we're watching them back and forth. But like this one, it copies off the old one, extends the story. They talk about Scott Bakula. They talk about uh, the other guy. Who's the other guy? Dean Stockwell. Yeah, yeah. I got not sure what his name was on the show, but um, this new one, it's this guy. The there's a girl that helps him out. Is Dean Stockwell? She plays the Dean Stockwell role in the show. But they were dating beforehand, so <laughs> for some reason the guy jumps jumps back in the past. And the girl's like, "Wait a minute! I was supposed to be the person who had jumped." So she volunteers to kind of follow him around on the jumps. He's forgotten everything, so he doesn't really know who she is. But they start to kind of. So there's like a love story there, which yeah. obviously it wasn't between Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell, but yeah, and I you see a lot more happening behind the scenes where the old Quantum Leap, you just heard them talk about stuff. Now you've got a lot of intrigue in the background and everything. I check it out. It, it's yeah. got a little action to it. I, I yeah. mean, this is a lot more current than the old Quantum Leap. Yeah. Well, friend of the show, George Thomas, also enjoyed it. He reviewed it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, oh, yeah. And he actually, he I think he saw the first couple of episodes, and he was he was enjoying it. He liked it. He wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a slam dunk, but it was also one that he wanted to see more of. So George Thomas enjoyed it as well. He played a robber in the first one. He jumped in the body of a robber. Second one, he played an astronaut, which was kind of wild. And the third one, he was in the body of a pro boxer. Um, not, not Mike Tyson or anything, just some, <laughs> you know, box we never heard before. But right. yeah, kind, kind of interesting stuff. I like it. Craig, okay. anything that you're watching that we should know about? Well, no, I mean, nothing new. My wife and I are kind of binge watching The Big Bang Theory uh, right mm-hmm. now on HBO Max, a show that um, I watched quite a bit when it first came out. And then I think um, when it had come out, I was still in college uh, getting my bachelor's and they changed up. I had a scheduling change. So I ended up missing a few seasons here and there. And, you know, I'd watch it every now and then on TBS over the years. And, and I watched like the season finale and, you know, my wife actually watched it, but then I was like, you know what, there's, there's episodes that I know that I have not seen. So let's, let's start it and watch it from the beginning. So right now we're on like season five, episode 10. So that's kind of taken up quite a bit of our viewing experience right now. HBO Max still doing okay? I know for a while they tried to bury it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's debatable at this point. There's a lot of uh, backlash with all the moves they're making, and you know the the merger is expected next year, and hopefully things are smooth. I did notice they started putting a lot of those uh, Chip and Goat Joanna Gaines shows on there, the Magnolia yeah. Network. So. I wonder if that's like the first step in terms of merging yeah. that Discovery Plus content. I, I think the biggest question for me is just, you know, what what sort of cost associated with this merger will come to us? You know, it's already 15 bucks a month for HBO Max, which I think it's worth it. But if you're adding Discovery Plus, which there aren't very many shows on there that I'm interested in, if you're adding that and making it like 20 bucks a month, then that's probably going to price some people out of it. I don't know that it would price me out, but um, I'd, I'd be, I'd think about it because it's, it's, you know, I'm not really, I'm not interested in some of the discovery plus stuff, but um, hopefully it doesn't come to that big of a price hike, but we'll see. It, it was interesting. I'm, 
in case our listeners didn't know, I'm not really doing the day-to-day journalism anymore. I'm working with a public relations kind of trade magazine. And this is as to do with streaming. It was interesting. I was researching for a story about uh, wh- what political campaigns are spending their ad dollars on. And apparently most social networks don't need to take political advertisements anymore. Like Facebook's the only one they do. But the research I'm doing saying you don't get any bang for your buck. Like if you're putting out a Facebook ad looking for a political contribution, it's almost even. Like it's not worth it anymore because you're getting like for every dollar you spend, you get a dollar back. So why are you doing anything? And they were talking about how they were looking at streaming networks like Paramount Plus, HBO Max, and other things for the ad support version. They say it's hard. It doesn't make any sense. So I guess the big look now is these guys are looking at Disney and Netflix whenever their ad supported things come mm. through to say, hey, is that worth it? I mean, is it going to be worth our buck? So I, when's Netflix ads coming or Disney ads? I don't heard. think I don't think I think Net, Disney might be coming in December. Oh, wow. But I don't think Netflix is coming until next year. I would be I would be a little weary about the, about advertising political ads because you have to wonder too like what the market is because you know you you have political ads on certain networks and certain programming and time slot and a lot of that is because of who's watching it which means you're going after target audiences of people that vote. And, you know, I just kind of wonder if you're going after Netflix, you know, when you've got people that may or may not be voting or people that may or may not be of age to vote yet, you know. So I, right. I think that's always the drawback maybe of, of going to the streamers. Not that, you know, people that are older than 20 or 30, they they do watch stream streaming, but you just kind of wonder – how many voters are in that pool that you're going to really attract with your advertising? Yeah. And sometimes it's streaming, You see the same ad over and over again. I, I we're in Ohio where the politics is very weird this year. I'm not sure if I want to see a bunch of Ohio Senate ads <laughs> just uh, for, for various reasons. Laura, what are you watching? Anything different or you know, the same stuff? Um, I don't think I've added anything lately. Um, we watched, uh, watched, uh, I'm watching that Steve Carell show on oh, yeah. Hulu. Um, it's week seven. We just watched yesterday. Whew. That is really intense. It's interesting. Steve Carell with his beard, you know, it's a serious yes. thing. So. <laughs> yeah. Don't expect a Michael Scott character to come out. No, here. not at all. Um, on, on regular, on regular TV, I haven't really, I haven't really added any new shows. Um, I was poking around uh, like Sunday night to see if I could find anything to watch. Cause I know one of the networks is adding like regular programming on Sundays for the first time in a long time, but I didn't really see anything. Um, CBS had a show, has a show, a new one. Um, I'm terrible with the names. Uh, it's with Marsha Gay Harden. Mm. it's a lawyer show yeah that todd something todd yeah yeah. um i watched it the first episode and it was kind of funny it's a comedy drama you know across between it was kind of it was kind of funny but i didn't watch the second one so it it obviously didn't catch me that (laughs) it didn't keep me so well we we gotta talk about this i think we all you saw paramount plus right craig Oh, it's, not on, it's not on Paramount Plus, though. We got maybe try to watch this Alaska Daily. I, I'm with Laura. I'm a little concerned. I'm not a huge Hillary Swank fan, but we're newspaper people. I, I'd be intrigued to see how they play it up. My problem is I can't stay up that late. Yeah. Like well, right YouTube now. TV, Laura, you can just take yeah. yeah, I should. Watch whatever. Yeah. Like right now, it's 9.50, and I'm like... Oh, it's time for bed. <laughs> yeah, Laura's falling asleep. <laughs> All right. Well, 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 we'll close up soon. Um, Lots of stuff to promo. Hey, I got to start promoing my new gig. Uh, I'm working for PR Daily, a national PR publication. You might sit there like, I'm not into PR. Why would I read this? Well, I do the Daily Scoop. That's one of the big things I do where I talk about pop culture related to PR. 
So if you like pop culture, you probably like to call him. Uh, today, wrote about Lizzo. I'm not sure if I'm a big Lizzo fan, but it was interesting. Um, you know, we I write a lot about public relations campaigns to do well. And the Library of Congress invites Lizzo to come uh, visit the Library of Congress. And the Library of Congress is not a good place for younger people. Uh, but the Library of Congress did a great job. They invited Lizzo. Lizzo picked out James Madison's flute. I, it was a flute that was almost destroyed in the uh, British attack of the White House. Got a little controversy because some older people are like, what's this lady playing his flute for? But it drew a lot of attention to the Library of Congress. And now James Madison's historical wants Lizzo to go play Madison's flute at the historic house. So I got to say, you could not be more wrong, Chris. <laughs> I well, my husband and I took a tour of the Library of Congress, yes. and it was one of the best tours we've ever oh. taken in DC. Well, no, believe me, I'm a history nut myself. I mean, it, beautiful 70, building, oh. and um, it's really interesting the stuff that they have and and how they talk about how um, they move stuff in and out and have to protect it and stuff. Seven year old yeah. Chris would be all in. I'm just saying overall the audience there, mm. not talking about us, but overall the audience is probably a little bit older. So I just credit them for, hey, you know, trying to drive a more general younger audience. So, yeah, but they did get some flax. And some people were like, how dare she play that flute? But yeah, I wonder, how, that, I wonder how people, I wonder how people compare that to with uh, uh, Kim Kardashian wearing the Marilyn Monroe dress. Yeah. I mean, that, flute i think is crystal if i'm not mistaken it was like it was yeah, clear. yeah, yeah. um it for some reason i think it was crystal i mean it's a gorgeous thing i saw it on the news the one day i mean she's very talented flautist i guess you say yeah um she's she's very talented i saw her i saw a story on her on cbs's morning show she's a very interesting person and she's very apparently like really skilled flautist. Yeah. So yeah, no, it, it was interesting. I think I think a lot of people, if you don't know Lizzo at all and you just see her well, like if you just like the Library of Congress and you, you don't know Lizzo from a hole in the wall, seeing a very, seeing a big woman come up and say, Oh I'm gonna play the flute, you're like, what the heck? What what is this? What's going on? But it was interesting. So, yeah, check out Pierre Daily. Follow me on social media. I always post those articles there. Lots of interesting stuff. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to write about Gordon Ramsay yelling at his um, street pizza restaurant because they did a TikTok where they were doing uh, pineapple pizza. He doesn't like pineapple pizza. He's yelling about it. So lots of fun stuff there. Uh, earlier tonight, talked to Peter Holland about football. Pierce fired up about his Miami Dolphins. Uh, there was a little controversy <laughs> with their quarterback and um, getting a concussion. And mm. yeah, I asked Pierre about that like two minutes before the show ended. And I'm like, I have to go. <laughs> I got another <laughs> show coming up. So an hour like, later, you, were, you still had to close it he, down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't ask Peter about the Dolphins with two minutes left. It, it, <laughs> it's rough. But um, and then later tonight, oh my goodness, um, I'm meeting with Paul and Joe. Some crazy stories. Um, I wasn't, uh, I'm out with Gannett right now, but I hear there was another sexual incident that happened in Cedar Point. What's the Cedar Point, all the sex going on there? Hey, man, Cedar Point's oh. a fun place to be. Yes. <laughs> so we're, we're going to talk about that. Man, if, if your girlfriend says, hey, let's go to Cedar Point, you should be going, woo, this is great. <laughs> um, this one yeah. was like people standing in line too, which is even better. Oh yeah, yeah. Highly <laughs> I think yeah. the ride was like the freak ride or something. So I mean lots of yeah. all kinds of low-hanging fruit there. Uh we're gonna talk about LeBron uh James. He bought a pickleball team, which which I thought was kind of wild. Mm -hmm. And then a couple instances uh story about a man who urinates on his ex-wife's grave every day, which I thought was weird. And there's another story that we found. For some reason, peeing stories on that show just go right to the top. There's a man that peed off a balcony so often that people underneath the balcony had to wear, had to have umbrellas. The, <laughs> which, 
Wow. It's just awful. Yeah, terrible stuff. And then later tonight, we're going to be talking about the Steelers and how much they stink. If, if you like, if you hate the Steelers, you should love the show, but you love hearing about the, how the Steelers stink. <laughs> uh, Craig, anything on, on your world? No, no. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to record this week with George. Not sure about Bob, but George maybe. But uh, other than that, uh, nothing really going on. So, you know, uh, just covering the news down in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Lots, lots of good stuff happened down there. Laura, anything going on with you? No. <laughs> well, My life is boring as hell. <laughs> well, we'll check out the Canton Repository. That's yeah. one of the yeah. places Laura is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a Hall of Fame city. You might be a football fan out there. Hey, it's a place to go for Hall of Fame news, and there's always some fun stuff going on. I, a lot of it's local, which is okay. Yeah, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to. Um, I'm not going to tell you the topics of the stories, but we're uh, we're going to be looking into some big some big stuff that needs to be looked into. And it's kind of exciting because nice. not necessarily it's not necessarily a priority, you know, in our business right now. Mm-hmm. But it's nice to see that we're gonna be diving into some meaty stuff here. And there's a lot of things again, this is a we like to say international show, so we can't focus too much on like one small community, but yeah, man, I, I'm from that area, and hearing that McKinley might move their high school, my goodness, mm-hmm. uh, big deal. It, it was success for people in that area, so yeah, very good. All right, well, thanks again. We will meet up next week. Um, Craig's schedule varies, so this might be the part me and Laura show, and part me and um, me and um. Craig. Craig and Laura. Yeah, yeah Craig yeah. Dover guy. That was... Yeah, the other guy. Mike, his and, name is right on the screen, Chris. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. Who's that guy? I don't know him anymore. <laughs> and Laura, I, I think maybe if we'll give it a try, if you're up for it, uh, we'll, we'll cut out some of the streaming talk. Maybe we can watch a video together, too, a, a real quick YouTube video. Laura, you, Laura your life will change. It'll be great. I'll, I'll <laughs> let you pick the first one. So I won't. Oh, there you go. Might, might be something you're, you're more into. So. Very good. So we'll try it next week. It'll be good. So for Laura and Craig, I, I know who you are, Craig. Don't <laughs> worry. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Craig and I, oh, I, I got to mention, we had a fun talk of Colin Gay uh, from the Columbus Dispatch the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, Craig's got to get the um, the woman who covers the Vanderbilt football team. <laughs> we, we got distracted by that for about 10 minutes. So yeah. Craig, we, we got a booker. It'll be fun. I'll so. do my best. Yep. All right, so Laura and Craig and me, this has been our Seinfeld show. Have a great night, everybody. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer. You know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high-impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope. To learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.